Hey everybody, welcome to Brick System Brothers. My name is Nathan Masters. For the ideas series that I've been working on, uh, we've got the last five today, number 21 through 25, and just kind of doing some discussion and coverage of the ideas that passed the support stage and are now in review. Um, there's no guarantee that any of these will make it to an official LEGO ideas set, but I think some of them have a pretty good chance. So I've actually talked about the previous 20 over the course of three previous videos, which are all on our channel, you can check them out. Today, covering the last five, starting with Among Us. So number 21, Among Us the Skeld by Minifig in Disguise. Um, I think these projects are seeing success and ideas because Among Us has been very popular in the last year, um, and it's just based on a little mobile game. Uh, I have not played Among Us. I'm somewhat familiar with it, uh, some of the people that I know uh, we're getting into it a little bit, um, so I understand the appeal, and I know it's like, you know, we have something fun online, or uh, something fun that we want to represent with Lego pieces. That's been done quite often, um, but the, the real test will be, is Among Us still popular when Lego moves ahead with the review stage, which could be, um, you know, later into this year all the way. Um, and if Among Us isn't really at the top of the charts at that point, then there's not going to be much incentive at all to make it into an official LEGO set. Um, so that's kind of the problem that you have when you're approaching LEGO sets based on popular media um, and kind of pop culture, is does it stick around long enough for the license to be appealing to LEGO from a manufacturing standpoint? They want to put out a product that's going to sell well and do well on the shelves, um, probably a year or two or even three within the time period that the subject material was popular. So Among Us, pretty popular in 2020. Here at the start of 2021, it's still relevant, but it's starting to kind of fade a little bit. So I think Ideas just isn't the right platform for Among Us and LEGO crossover. I think they make really cool mocks and it's really fun. Personally, I have no desire to um, build Lego Among Us whatsoever. I don't play the game, so not really, um, yeah, not really interested in whatever this would become if it was to become an official Ideas product. I don't think there's enough lasting appeal for this to make it through. Move on to number 22, The Roman Warship by Ian Ha. Uh, a very, again, advanced looking model here. Um, especially just with the shaping along the sides, using those bow pieces, um, bows and slopes, all the sideways building um, hasn't been seen to this, I think, level of effect on a lot of our previous LEGO warships, because usually they try to use those preformed hull plates. Um, and then all the colors as well along the sides, all these shields, um, you start looking at things with this much decoration and the amount of printing that would be needed to kind of match the original submission here. And um, I think what's helping this is it's a little bit smaller scale project, so it's not overboard in terms of scale. There's a lot of minifigs on there. I don't know if those would all um, make it through the review process to be included in a set like this. Um, but the concept itself, very solid concept. Uh, you almost need the display base with this boat just because of the way that the hole is complete here. It wouldn't really stand on its own. So one thing you could do is flatten out the hole and then just have it setting on a desk. Uh, but I think for this specific concept where it's more of a display model, the base is very appropriate. Um, if LEGO decided to move ahead with this concept, they would probably try to tone it down a little because it's quite elaborate. A lot of the gilding and the tigers on there just maybe a little bit over the top. Um, I don't know as it adds a whole lot to the model itself. Um, I'm sure people would appreciate uh, having two tigers along with the Roman warship, but just in terms of what Lego tries to put out of ideas from their design standpoint, I don't think that's necessarily something that would carry over into an official product. But the rest of it, not too far off from uh, what we've come to expect from the design team and the collaboration that LEGO has with their fans. 
probably would be getting updated custom sails for the model because these are reusing the dark red sails from Queen Anne's Revenge, um, which tells me that this was a physically built model. And like I was talking about in my first ideas review video, I always appreciate when designers do a physical build for you know anything, be it a mock, be it an idea submission. Because when you do a physical build, you actually have firsthand experience with how the pieces have gone together, um, how it, it kind of reacts in an environment with gravity. And this all sounds like, well, of course, you have to understand that. But when you do digital building, it's easy to just kind of put pieces on top of one another um, in, a, in such a way that it appears to be a very stable mock and a very um, well-built and, and put together creation. But then when you actually go to build it with physical pieces, you realize that there's some things that just don't quite work out the same way that you had hoped um, and anticipated. So building physically is always kind of the litmus test for um, whether or not something is actually feasible to do with Lego. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I love building with studio. Digital building programs are great because they kind of take off the limitations that people have with um, having a certain number of pieces that they need. But I think at the end of the day, building physical models for this specific approach of um, testing a concept or putting something out there that other people are going to want to build, I think physical models just come out on top because you are more familiar with how it reacts when the actual pieces go together. So if this is indeed a physically built model, props to the designer here. Um, and also for keeping it at a smaller scale. I think that's where a lot of ideas projects start to flounder is they get a little too ambitious and they're just, they get to a scale that sometimes they don't really know what they're supposed to be. Um, and it's easy to go all in and start filling in details where there don't need to be details. So the Roman warship here is a very nice scale of something that could have been a much more ambitious project and still looked good but within ideas specifically, I think this is what LEGO is looking for. I think it has a good shot at moving forward. Um, some things would probably be changed, but... Moving on to number 23, Adam's Family Mystery Mansion by Disney Brick 55 Another one here with some custom minifig designs and colors and prints. So I do like seeing designers, when minifigs are appropriate for a model, um, kind of take a stab at that and designing their own minifigs and starting to see that more and more at this level of quality. The house itself, a very nice approach to the subject matter. Uh, it does have the open back, so you know there's kind of trade-offs with an open back model. Um, it does allow you to do more with fewer pieces and you can put more effort into the front and the facade and kind of the um, display side of a model. Uh, and then also, I think it can allow you to contribute more to interiors of buildings. But then when you only have two sides, or three sides, in this case it's just the two, it does limit display options. Um, sometimes the model will feel incomplete, just having kind of just the corner. Uh, it almost feels like something out of a movie scene. And of course, the Adams Family uh, out of classic media. Um, but I believe even in the show it was a complete house and they were just filming within rooms uh, but I think the two-sided structure appropriate for this um, subject material the color scheme here interesting choice um, to kind of emulate the black and white nature of the films uh, of the of the shows but also some subtle coloring here with the dark red chimney and the sand green uh, little shed greenhouse on the side there maybe uh, but the rest of it kind of an homage to the original show that was aired black and white for the most part um, with the black roof and then the kind of two-tone grays and a little bit of white on the rest of the building. A nice use of the cheese slopes for the siding. Does get a little bit part intensive when you have to put uh, every single row of studs up with the little one by one and one by two cheese slopes. So that will boost up that part count quite a bit. We're also looking at the small one by one semicircle tiles used for the roof design, which allows you to get more detailed there, but again, 
quite a few pieces packed into a little area. So that's maybe where a lot of the part limitations are going. Uh, the pieces that you save from not having a back of the model kind of being able to be used in the front and um, really get down to the details there. Um, so the Mystery Mansion, uh, similar to some of the stuff that LEGO has done with Scooby-Doo, of course that's a different license, uh, and this being based on original media would have to be uh, licensed as well. So looking at obtaining something that LEGO doesn't have right now, um, just a roadblock to moving ahead with this specific project. But I think it has potential. I think it could be polished up a little bit more if it moves ahead. Um, but enough people appreciate Adam's family from back in the day to see this reach 10,000 supporters. And I think it would do well as an idea set um, just a competition in this run of approved supported projects maybe be too much to see this one move ahead. We'll have to wait and see. Number 24 is the GMC center this up here Blue Chip 100 1957 by Igmanuel and um, two different trucks here I'm not sure if this is just an alternate color represented um, but something that's very familiar in terms of our creator expert theme from the past couple years where Lego kind of tackles a car concept at a larger scale, um, kind of breaking into the collectible, almost die cast style models that a lot of people like to collect. Um, so it would fit right at home in that family and it's, it's a vehicle that hasn't been done really at all in that theme so it not necessarily filling a gap in the product line but it's doing something that hasn't been seen before which is good so something original out of ideas the GMC is a license that they would have to get I can't think of a GMC license from Speed Champions but I might be wrong because there's been a lot of Speed Champions so in that case if LEGO does have the GMC license this would just be a matter of getting approval to do a model based on a 1957 truck um, and these look really good um, based on the gift with purchase car anything with chrome and ideas doesn't mix very well the chrome got removed from that um, contest winner so the chrome here is pretty crucial to the aesthetics of the model and I would hope that if Lego moved forward with this design they would be able to keep the chrome um, but chrome gold is the only color still in production in recent years I think the last time we saw chrome silver was 2018 so that's not an effect that Lego has been doing a lot of at all in fact none in the past three years so it would be hard to see um, the chrome silver being brought back just for this idea set now, if Chrome Silver is going to be brought back and used across other sets, then it might work out. Um, but Chrome Silver involves, I think, tooling different molds because by the time that that coating is applied to the pieces, the tolerances are affected just enough um, that just sp like effectively spray painting Chrome Silver on original parts isn't good enough for LEGO standards. And so any pieces that are chromed I think have to have a slightly different mold um, just so that they can produce pieces that are slightly smaller to allow for that coating of chrome which if you think about it is pretty involved process just to have um, a few pieces in this color and I think that's why Lego hasn't done a lot of chrome in the recent years so chrome definitely a fan favorite color that Lego has done in the past and um, it's holding its value really well. Parts that are chromed are still worth uh, more than their regular colored parts. So all that comes into play when we're looking at the, the GMC model here and just talking about, you know, to do this justice, I think the chrome is required and that's very easy to do in studio because you can just change the colors and make a render. Not so easy to do with parts that don't exist in chrome. So. I think these uh, these bumpers, curved bumper pieces, we already have those from back in the day. The 2x2 two two tiles or whatever is used right here might be new and some of the stuff in the grill has not been chromed before. So looking at pieces that do not currently exist that would need to be made for this to happen. Uh, Ideas has a part budget 
where you can only introduce so many new elements per set. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. And also, just want to mention this, just in terms of when ideas projects start to look similar to other themes that LEGO has done, specifically the modulars, but we've talked about that already. Um, like I said, with the creator expert vehicles, if this is too close to something that's already been done in another theme, or something that would look better in a different LEGO theme, it's going to have a hard time getting through ideas. I think ideas really thrives when there's uh, original submissions that don't really fit in to any other current LEGO themes. So Flintstones would be one of those. It's just perfectly suited for the ideas um, theme in Marketplace. And um, the medieval blacksmith that we're looking at now, um, just a well done execution of that project. Uh, where LEGO doesn't have a current castle theme, and so the best place for something like that to come from is ideas at the moment. Now, if LEGO had a medieval castle theme that was actively running, and they wanted to do a blacksmith set, they would be more likely to put it in that theme to try to sell as part of that part of the market share than through ideas. But since they don't, and since it's been so long since LEGO did have that kind of theme, ideas once again coming in clutch with... Um, kind of a great platform for that to be released. So the question is, um, does LEGO want to go this direction with their creator expert vehicles, which are no longer creator expert because they changed that theme to 18 plus. And so, you know, that might all come into play when looking at this truck in terms of, is it an appropriate model to be released within the ideas platform? Um, just something to discuss. The last one on the list, number 25, Viking Village by Brick Hammer. Let me get this. Uh, man, it's kind of interesting. Um, the angle, maybe not really doing it justice here for, for what it is. And just the, the elements that I can see here, this bridge kind of going back to some of the early 2000s pieces. Um, very compact small structures and then maybe a plate base so it's hard to get a feel for what the actual size of the model is let's see if uh, there's any other pictures on the ideas page to kind of look at here so here's a nice uh, different view where we can see kind of the main structure is off to the left and then there's a little rock structure on the right and just get a little better idea of what actually this submission is because as I was looking through these I think the Viking Village is going to be my top pick for the one with the best chance to move ahead in this list of 25. Um, mostly this is based on the success of the Medieval Blacksmith that was just announced and was going to be released February 1st. And um, kind of the reaction to that product and LEGO's willingness to do something like that is a strong indicator to me that building kind of within that theme um, and not necessarily a strictly medieval theme but taking inspiration from a different time period and then going into a little bit of creative liberty with the structure can do well on ideas and fits well into what lego wants to do with the platform right now um, combine that with the viking theme that lego has visited but is not currently doing as well as you know, just within this list of 25, another similar idea with the Roman warship. No, it's not Viking, but um, it's kind of in the same genre. So seeing the popularity for that does exist. And of course, the Viking village reaching 10,000 supporters. Maybe jump on ideas sometime. Just search Viking and see what all is there. I think you'll find quite a list of projects. Even though they aren't reaching the same level of support, they're doing pretty good. So some people like to make predictions about which LEGO set from ideas will move ahead uh, with approval and be designed. I don't necessarily want to do a lot of that because probably going to be wrong a lot of the time, but I think there's a lot of factors that come in favor for the Viking Village. If I had to make a prediction about any of these 25 sets moving ahead, it would be that set. Um, it's just checks all the boxes with what LEGO is doing recently in Ideas. Um, very similar to how we looked at the success of Pirates of Barracuda Bay and the Medieval Blacksmith. 
Um, Pirates of Barracuda Bay, we've seen about a year's worth of successful sales, uh, great reaction from the community to that set. So even though the deviation was very great from the original submission, a lot of fans felt like it was justified. You got basically a two-in-one uh, where you could build the ship or the base, uh, the, the kind of the hideout thing. So that was received very well. Now the blacksmith is just going into the point where fans are getting their hands on it. A February 1st release, um, starting to see reviews come out from different places. Uh, it's actually much more split, in my opinion, than Pirates of Barracuda Bay was. A lot of people upset that the design is so different from the fan design. A lot of people uh, really happy with it, myself included, um, that LEGO did update many of the aspects of the fan creation. Um, probably the biggest one of those being the roof. Now, some people have been saying that the structure is majorly different from the fan submission, and it's not. But the way that LEGO is choosing to display it and the certain angles of the building that are being shown, uh, I can see where the confusion comes in. So if you still think that LEGO changed up the actual layout of the building, I would encourage you to take a second look at um, just the comparison between you know, maybe a floor plan side by side with the models correctly rotated um, because most of the images from the fan design on the original submission show it from one angle. Most of the images from LEGO are showing it from a different angle. Um, and so it might look like there's a lot changed around, but in terms of the actual layout of the building, not much changed. Now there were significant updates to the roof um, and some of the other structure components. Uh, the base of the model was largely reduced to um, kind of put more into the actual structure, which in my opinion is a good move. So just wanting to go back and look at some of the recent things in the same vein as Viking Village, um, where we have kind of a theme that LEGO has done in the past, a lot of fans have nostalgia for, and now bringing that into current LEGO production and themes, updated pieces, updated prints, all that good stuff that we love to see coming out uh, of LEGO every year. IDEA is a great platform to do that, and there have been very well executed designs in the past year or two that Viking Village could see very similar success if LEGO moved forward with it. Um, the scale of the village as well, kind of like the Roman warship, is something where it's definitely attainable. Um, it's not this massive layout of an entire city. It's somewhat scaled down, a couple of rock outcroppings, a couple of buildings, but the buildings being smaller. Um, and then having a couple minifigs just to populate it, um, maybe two or three floors, but the floors aren't really high either. So yeah, again, a great job with the scale there, maybe even smaller than the Medieval Blacksmith set. So definitely something that could be uh, a 60 to $100 set and uh, look very well done at that price point. Something that LEGO could say, all right, let's, let's take this, but also upgrade it to the next level. Um, and then it would be some in maybe the same area as the medieval blacksmith, which is 150. Um, and you know, people saying that's maybe not quite the same as a modular. Actually, in terms of piece count, it is effectively a modular building. It just doesn't have the same integration with the city, which it shouldn't, because it's not a modular. But um, value-wise, it's very good. So that is one of the sets I want to pick up this year. Looking to the future. Um, and if LEGO moves ahead with a Viking Village set, I would be very interested in following and possibly buying it out of the ideas line. So, that wraps up the series. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I have now looked at all 25 of the supported ideas projects. These came out at the end of 2020, and they are now in the review phase. Um, we should be hearing an update from LEGO about which, if any of these, move forward for the next round of idea sets. Of course, we're also still waiting on some other ones from previous um, iterations of you know successful sets. So I think Winnie the Pooh's still out there. Um, we do have the Medieval Blacksmith now, so maybe keep an eye out for those as well. But when these actually move forward uh, and become to the point where we start to look for set images and set details is quite a ways out, probably a year or so. So a little bit on the early side to be saying um, what LEGO is going to do, but 
Uh, I did want to talk about it a little bit, talk through it, and just have some discussion. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys around the channel.